but my father was very proud of me and he always praised me for my writings for my good marks in exams so but he was just like other indian fathers who are afraid to show afraid to express their love yeah. to their kids actually he was a very uh, expressive yeah. person no he was not he was, actually he was not, he was not <laughs> yeah <laughs> But he did okay. it in different ways by reading yeah. your books yeah. and other yeah. things. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Most fathers are not actually. But uh, you can yeah. tell who were the writers. Really yeah, writers. sorry. Uh, writers. Yeah, uh, those were not the Sindhi writers actually, yeah, yeah. Okay. because in my school time, as I told you, we were used to study Hindi literature Hindi, yeah, yeah. and also Gujarati literature. uh actually tagore was the first person whom i started liking as a writer uh his stories for children you read him in translation yeah in hindi only in hindi. yeah and he reminded me of our baba baba is my mother's actually um mother's maternal uncle okay. whom we used to call baba with a long dadi so <laughs> i was very fond of fond of him so tagore i was impressed by tagore first and then i read shah sachal and sami in my textbooks few couplets of them i wrote uh, i read and i came to know about this whole new world of peace love poetry and culture so then also i started reading them you started reading them in school time yeah oh, yeah madhavi uh, any of your poems and uh, stories witness is about the independent woman and a woman's uh, struggle to find her space and rights within a familial situation even many of your essays are about that did you have an arranged marriage I'm asking because he written a very touching poem to the father, where the father encourages the daughter to be very ambitious, but after the marriage he expects her to be docile and uh, just be a housewife to cook well and someone who succeeds to everything. You know? So, what kind of marriage did you have? <laughs> it's a totally arranged marriage. Uh the, the reason is I'm not interested in marriage. <laughs> you were not interested in marriage. Huh? But born with uh, one of the six sisters in my yeah. family. And you were the eldest? No, I'm the number 3. Number 3. Uh, okay. I cannot uh, avoid that uh, marriage settlement. i'm trying to avoid but somewhat i could eat okay and the emotional black me you know mm. this is all good and another thing here i want to mention this in my family when i started writing and i am started participating in conference after my college days they worried about my future at that time the social setup is the girl is started writing she is not fit for family if the girl writes she is not fit for family uh, she cannot be a good daughter she cannot be a good wife okay i don't know how it's come into that now this girl she is writing she is going here and there she do this always she, she thinks different her future will be a big question that's what the full family circle is giving the pressure to my even your father thought so no no huh? the pressure is given to my father acha from the relative from huh? the relatives i am trying to avoid that you know so i agree with the marriage settlement when they started looking for the boys in my family i am the only girl who is not fair okay rest everyone is like my mother i am like my dad so the every boy came to me they said this girl is not very fair so you have to give 10 pounds extra uh, 
in the jewelry, dowry. Dowry, or cash, which has irritated me more. <laughs> How, what type of uh, things going on? And all very educated. I'm what? sure they were. Uh, I told them, if any boy, whether he's studying or not studying, okay, and if he wants to marry me without a penny, I'm ready to marry. That's the only condition I put. I got my Shankar like that. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, didn't take any time. No, so, we married. Up to now, okay, the settlement is going on. No, but you got yeah. him on your terms. I think it's still wonderful. Yeah. That so that is the only terms, only condition I put. I put no caste, no religion, nothing. I don't want to expect anything. Even the higher posting also I was not expecting. Okay. But I want the person, the boy should not ask, demand anything. Just for the marriage settlement. <coughs> we got this boy like that. I said immediately yes. Uh -huh. So it's went on. <laughs> Suppose if the choice is given to me, I will not. You won't be married. Yeah. I, I, I have to accept it, you know. <laughs> I have to accept this. No. Okay, but it is not. It's not that way. <laughs> you, you had an arranged marriage. Yeah. And uh, you know that uh, amongst Indies, they changed name after marriage. You know? yeah. Like your mother was with you. Yeah. Then she became Deepa after marriage. What yeah. about you? Did they change your name? Um, yeah. Actually, I got married in 1995. It was an arranged marriage. My father expired in 1992. Okay. And then my mother was not keeping well. She was worried about her two daughters. And I was working at that time also in that same college. And people were used to tell my mother that you are not getting married your daughter because you want her money. And my mother was very shocked. She, she was very sad for that. And seeing her situation and her illness, I accepted to get married, and that was an arranged marriage. Again, the pressure came from... From the society only. The society. Actually, we were living very happily with our mother. There was no need to get married at that time mm -hmm. without my will or my choice, actually. So we accepted the very first proposal. After a few days, we went to hospital, and the receptionist asked my name. I was about to say my name, but before that, my husband said, Rashmi. Rashmi? Yeah. And I was wondering, who is this Rashmi? <laughs> <laughs> I told that lady, no, not Rashmi, I'm Vimmi. He told me, okay, if you don't wish to change your name, do not change your surname also. I told him, okay, yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> I am happy, but I was not aware that he was, uh, he was actually not supporting me. There was a taunt in his voice actually. Yeah, but I was not, I could not get that actually, his, uh, his point of view or his intention actually. But within 15 or 20 days, I realized that uh, I'm not suitable for them and they are not suitable for me. Because there was a place for my checkbook, my passbook and my salary in that house. But there was no place for my books and my poetry. And so, you were teaching already? Yeah, I was in the same college actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. for your salary. And yeah. <laughs> so we were not ready. We, ha we had no understanding to live together. But somehow we mutually understood that we are not... So made to live uh, together. In a very yeah. Short time yeah. You realized it. yeah. That was a tough decision actually. And I took about two years for this decision. And we lived uh, separately. But then again, I came to this decision only that I cannot live with that person and with that family 
if they do not accept me as a member of that family, if they do not allow me to visit my mother's home, if they, they are not happy to see my sister in their home, so how can I live there with them? My poems for them before my marriage, they praised my poetry, but after my marriage, my poems were rubbish. So, so that was clear indications for me that I am not for them and they are not for me actually. That was a tough decision, but yeah. the way it determined. Yeah. Did your mother accept your decision? Yeah, absolutely actually. I called my mother on that night that uh, I cannot live here and you please come and take me from this place. She advised me to stay there just for a night let the day begin, I will come back to you then. I told her, okay, but after half an hour, again I called her and I told her, if you are not coming, I will come myself. So, <laughs> she was so sweet actually and she has full faith on me and she came and she told those persons that I am taking my child, my daughter, to my home and we came back to our home then. She brought you back? Yeah, and she never questioned me. She told me that you are the one who has to live your life. No one can live your life. So be brave and live the life. I yeah. think that was a wonderful yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> actually. Yeah. Madhavi, uh, you worked in a bank. And uh, you also wrote, and uh, your first collection of poems, uh, you have written that, uh, you wrote it in the train, while traveling in the train in Bombay. Yes, yes. So how did you do all this, uh, run a home, and then you had this nice husband that uh, you wanted to marry, and then you were also writing uh, these poems. So how did you manage to do all this? I managed to do all that because I am writing poems. Really? <laughs> Otherwise, my life is kind of... Really? I was just breathing with the poems. Yes, imagine a person who is more interested with books and literature and other activities and that person is working in a foreign bank. From morning 9 o'clock to evening 5 o'clock, I should be a very professional person. Which bank? HSBC. 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 Okay. okay. It's totally different. I'm doing statutory audit, INM reports, all, yeah. <laughs> all uh -huh. the things which is not related to me. Well, these writing poems and reading books, that makes the life, and that only is giving me energy to manage all that. My hope, my husband, <laughs> the, according to you, the sweet husband. <laughs> <laughs> Not according to you. <laughs> husband is <laughs> better. You need sweet husband. Yeah. <laughs> no, he is sweet. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about the sweet afterwards. <laughs> no. The thing is, that only is given me the energy to manage all the household and the two children Husband and the corporate. Wow. Otherwise, no, I was not there in this uh, yeah. level. From what you say, it means that it was writing. That writing is makes me alive, you know. That keeps me alive, you know. Otherwise, no, I cannot imagine my life, you know, without that. And it's very difficult. I was living at Dombivali at that time. Can you imagine from Dombivali to BT? A person traveling every day? Yeah, it's a long distance. Long distance. And we read books at that time only. One hour yeah. lunch time, we have a review, right? That time. So that makes my life. The energy, that gives me energy actually. That's what I want to say. Uh, I like uh, some of your uh, very short poems you have written. I don't know whether you wrote them in the train, but these are wonderful poems. Mm. Uh, there is uh, one poem about uh, this woman married your husband in the Middle East. Yeah. And it's about her. Now. Yeah, She's Dubai Canal. Yes, yes. 
it's on Dubai Carnival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then uh, there is another one between compare women uh, uh, with elephants. Elephants. These two poems are short, but they are very uh, clear about how you look at uh, women and their uh, life. You know. mm. so can you read those? Yeah, two sure, poems? sure, 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 sure. I read this, uh, that Middle East husband, that poem, you know. That poem's title is Dubai Kanavan. Yeah, but first poem, if you read it, uh, Anibala. Oh, sure, sure, I'll read Anibala. This is the poem that elephant, the, yeah, comparing yeah. elephant with a woman, you know. With a woman. Comparison of the elephant and the woman. Anihalin Balam, Palavidam, Pasam, Kadal, Kudumbam, Uravuhal, பிரிவுகள் எதிலும் கண்ணீருடன் கலங்குவதில் பெண்களைப் போலவே ஆணைகளும் இருப்பதாக அறிந்தவர்கள் சொல்கிறார்கள் அவர்கள் அறிந்திருக்க நியாயமில்லை கால்களை பரப்பி மல்லாக்க விழுந்த ஆணைகள் பெண்களைப் போல தானே எழுந்து நடப்பதில்லை என்பதை This is the Middle East husband, that poem. The title of the poem is Dubai Kanavan. Yennai kadalil muttu kulithu emandu pohun Dubai Kanavan. Yirand aandukku orumurai malai kana naan unru un arabu palai panamal. This is the really nice one. Very beautiful one. We think in your poems, you know, you could... फर्स्ट पोएम इज वेटर के सदा थे चाह जी प्याली मू तो तरफ वधाई तो मू तरफ डिठो तुझू थद्यू अखियों मुझा गरम चप मु चाय में ही वार किथा अची वो नाउ इन हिंदी वेटर को बुलाती हूँ चाय की प्याली मैंने तुम्हारी तरफ बढ़ाई तुमने मेरी ओर देखा तुम्हारी ठंडी आंखें मेरे गरम होठ मेरी चाय में यह बाल कहाँ से आ गया मुझे पता है तुम चाय नहीं पियोगे तुम्हारे साथ बैठकर सिर्फ कोल्ड कॉफ़ी ही पी जा सकती है मैं कोल्ड कॉफ़ी के लिए वेटर को बुलाती हूँ अदावन जी दिस पोएम इज मुखे अधिकार ना है मुझे अधिकार नहीं है मेरे कमरे की खिड़की कई महीनों से बंद थी मेरे कमरे की खिड़की कई महीनों से बंद थी एक दिन चींची की आवाज़ सुनी देखा काली चिड़िया के तीन बच्चे थे खिड़की की सलाखों के कोने में उनकी माँ बार बार उड़कर जाती थी और एक एक दाना ले आती थी मैंने सोचा क्यों न मुट्ठी भर अनाज के दाने रख दूँ पर नहीं माँ की ममता और खुददारी को चोट पहुँचाने का मुझे कोई अधिकार नहीं है थैंक यू थैंक यू you have written a lot of about the caste system and uh, i know that you also been very outspoken and very vocal about your views uh, in this matter can you tell us uh, something about contemporary tamil literature and the contribution made by uh, alit writers to contemporary tamil literature? You have written about this, but uh, yeah. I would very much like you to talk about. 
Yeah, so I have a, I read all about the contemporary Dalit writers' writings, Bama, Raj Gautam, and Vadu, uh, Asriya. But uh, this Vili Pai Dev and then Anbadam, they are all very significant uh, writers, I feel. Alahe Periyavan, okay. I don't want to miss it. But uh, when I started reading about uh, the translation of Marathi Dalit contemporary writings, I feel there is a difference, you know, vast difference. The initially, when the Tamil uh, people, in the Dalit writings, they write about the pains, yeah. uh, their past life, okay? the caste discrimination. I agree, it's still there. I agree. But they were not yet gone into the second level. Of writing. Right. Uh, That's what I mean. You mean the, the initial yes. level of the pain? And pain, the that will, But the, what is the Dalit family, second generation is looking the society. That's not there in any way in the writings. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, I always tell them, uh, one stage is over, come out and see the second stage. How we are, how the, we are looking at the society. Okay. But that is not it come according to me. Really it's not it come. Not it come according to me. Mm, so my Kalyana Bhattilkar, that is one short story I yeah. wrote in this. In the short story, uh, the hero in the short story, that character, the person was a Dalit uh, scholar. And uh, the Dalit scholar, she received a letter from her friend who was inviting her for a housing ceremony. Okay, she wanted to attend that ceremony. So all that incidents were talking about that. And in that, I'm telling one incident, there in our house in Mumbai, uh, always, they were for removing our uh, wastage, the kachada, one person always comes and collects all that. I am asking a very open question. Is anyone know about the person's name? We never. We never bothered to ask, what is his name? It happens to me only. Suddenly, one day when the person left, you know, I forgot to put my vest back in. He left. I call him, Kachda Mala, come here. Suddenly, yeah. I realized what I did. I did it never name even. 22 years I was living in this Mumbai. I never bothered to ask the person's name. Mumbai. I was, this makes me really, one week I couldn't sleep. What a person I am. That's the question. That's the question I am putting to everyone. So, uh, we, when the person asks water, we are giving him water in the, uh, in the empty bisleri bottle. I noticed. Is there anyone noticed? So, it's there in our mind. See, I am thinking, I am talking about equality. I am a very good person, you know, all that which I myself thinking about myself, which I felt I am not there. So this story is about that. Story is about that. So I, this story is discussed. Yeah. So I told, see, second level we have to think. We have to think about everyone. How the society, this uh, social customs, the society structure is in our mind. Whether the person is a Dalit or non-Dalit, whoever it is, we have to think about it. We have to think about it. But that thoughts are not coming into contemporary Tamil Dalit writings. That is what you I think. You mean that the That's second not and third, third generation is not, not be oppressed, oppressed like that. It's not coming. We are into, not, uh, it's right. not coming into it. How long you can talk about the pain? That is the thing I, I am asking. And, and after that, uh, writers like uh, Jane Murphy, 
I want to know about these efforts you make and how you feel uh, they're important. Another thing I want to know as a non-Sindhi is that um, almost all uh, Sindhi poems, like the ones we used in Sparrow or Pingata Shabnam and all, we read it in Hindi translation. Yeah. We never got to see the uh, Sindhi script. In fact, for this uh, workshop, we started looking for Sindhi script. You know. How does it look and whether it's Persian or the industry, that's why I sent you a message. So I want to know about this. Uh, can Sindhi stories and poems be read only in Hindi to be accessible to a wider audience? Uh, I want to know about that. Yeah. Um, actually, Sindhi community is going through identity crisis because once there were so many Sindhi medium schools uh, there were literary magazines were also yeah. getting published. But nowadays, Sindhi schools are being closed. Yeah. yeah. They are, uh, they are, then medium was closed, then Sindhi was offered as a subject. Okay. Now, as a subject also, Sindhi is being taught very few places. Yeah. Uh, in Mumbai University, Delhi University, MS University and in my college and government college Ajmer. Only five or six places are there where Sindhi is being taught at college and university level. And there's a dearth of children literature also. We have to produce good, interesting language material for young learners. And for me also that was a problem when I was learning. It is assumed that all Sindhis know Devanagari script, yeah. but that is not the case. Many persons do not know how to read Sindhi in Devanagari, and very few are there who can read Sindhi Persian Arabic script. Yeah, yeah. And there is a larger group who is living outside India, who is not acquainted with Devanagari, and nor Arabic Parsha. Mm -hmm. Now they are going to introduce Romanized Sindhi. Romanized? Yeah. With Roman script. Right. And that group has standardized Romanized script and they have actually launched a website called Romanized Sindhi. So Sindhi community is trying very hard to keep the culture, the language alive through any script. And to be uh, in mainstream and to reach our literature um, to other literatures, mm. we have to translate those in Hindi or in any other language. And actually for Sindhis, Hindi is just like their second mother tongue okay. because Hindi was taught in Sindh also. Okay. and. Uh, that's why uh, it is very easy for Sindhi writers themselves to translate their writing into Hindi, as I have done this translation myself. So that's why yeah, you yeah, see yeah. Uh, Sindhi literature in Hindi mainly. Yeah, in yeah. yeah. English, also does her own translation into uh, yeah. Hindi. But her poems are available in uh, Sindhi script, but yeah. you are not. I didn't uh, send you actually. <laughs> I thought nobody will be able to read in Sindhi, which is written from right to left, left 
Yeah. So yeah. that's why I sent this book. Yeah. No, I yeah. understand that. Yeah. Job to put the Yeah. On the bed, but it's available in uh, in the yeah. script. That is one or two. Yeah. And uh, another thing is that uh, these stories that you write for children, you are writing in Devanagari script, is it? No, those are in Persian Arabic Sindhi. Okay. Yeah. Actually, in these days also, Sindhi literature is written in. Persian Arabic mainly, then it is transliterated into Devanagari. A few poets have co uh, come out with the anthologies, um, in which, in the same book, Devanagari and Persian Arabic script is used. Both, both yeah, both the scripts uh, are there actually. And yours are being brought out like that with no. Persian Arabic and not yet actually, like not yet actually. And how about publishing? Is it easy to publish in? No, it is not easy at all because there is very less le readership. There, we are so scattered that there are hardly a few organizations are there. There is no publisher. A writer himself is the publisher in many cases. Sometimes he gets financial assistance from government body. He does not sell the books. We send our books complimentary to other writers. So we are the writers, we are the readers, we are the critics. Mm -hmm. Hari Daryani Dilgir uh, was a good Sindhi poet. He wrote a poem and in the end he asked himself, there is nobody to read my poems, then why I write these poems? For whom I have written these poems? So. Your books are also published by you, isn't it? Yeah. And you distribute them yourself? Yeah. So you spend your own money and publish Yeah. That's really sad, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's what true. About, uh, you, you mentioned the government bodies which yeah. publish. Which mm. are the government bodies? Uh, National uh, Sindhi, uh, sorry, National Council for Promotion of Sindhi Language. Okay. That is an organization of Government of India, Ministry of HRD. You are a part then, of it. Yeah, so I was a member of that actually for three terms. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that helps to... Yeah. And then state level academies also are there. They also help. So yeah. there is no question of royalty. And no, other things. no. So you no, publish no. it and you mm. kind of distribute yeah. it your side. But that is the problem because there is no one to see what good literature is, one who has money or one who can get money can publish himself or herself. Yeah, so, so there is no way of uh, getting yeah. you know, it's, it's, there is no publishing yeah. choosing mm -hmm. it, that, that, that is a problem. Yeah. You know, that's the problem for many uh, languages uh, which yeah. are not spoken by uh, yeah. many, not just uh, mm -hmm. Sindhi. Even languages like my yeah. have had uh, problems. You know, they have to be translated yeah. into Hindi to reach yeah. uh, people. Although now my play has been given a status, yeah. but uh, it's not easy to find a uh, my play reader. Among the younger That's generations, true. not many may know my mm -hmm. Actually, hundreds of books in Sindhi are published in India and in Sindh also. In Sindh, in Sindh also, actually, and they. Um, they die for Sindhi literature from India, but due to a very costly postage, uh, it's very difficult to get their books and it's very difficult for them also to get our books. Okay. So nowadays, uh, e-literature and e-books are yeah, yeah. being popularized on uh, Sindhi websites yeah. also. And also there are a lot of yeah. Sindhi websites. Yeah. Yeah. 